Welcome to the Treasure Center. I'm Pastor Joe. I'm excited about the things God is doing in our life and in your life. I'm telling you, I am so happy you joined us this morning to watch this dynamic message. Sit down, relax, just kind of chill, you know, because God has some unique things in store for you this morning. Life changing, you hear me? I said life changing word, powerful word that's coming your way. I promise you, it will change your life, give you new direction, give you new a new outlook on what God has for you. So enjoy this powerful word. And don't forget, we're always living life in love. I started a series last week, and um, and uh, if you hadn't heard the first one, um, please go back and look at new wine. Amen. God, God will refuse to put new wine into old wine skins. God is not in the business of patching old jeans. Y'all, please follow me. And for you to get this whole understanding, you got to go back and check out the video. But the, he's not in the business of patching old jeans. He's in the business of giving you new jeans. Amen. And I know we, we, are, we are in a society now where whole jeans are fashionable. But uh, I think I talked about last week how my mama would um, put patches on my old jeans and, um, and then fix them for me. But the... Uh, it was never her intent for me to continue to wear my old patched jeans, but but it was just to get us through to the point where she could buy new jeans. Amen. And last thing about last week, and I want you to run over there and check out that on YouTube. But the um, the Lord told me something. He said, um, Joe, I refuse to give new ideas to people that's stuck in the old order. Is this thing on? This thing on, I don't think y'all heard it. I'm going to say it again, amen. I can pick up somebody missed me. Uh, under, And I need God, I need us to hear what God was telling me for the house. He was saying he, he refused to give new ideas and new plans to anyone stuck in the old order. Somebody say update. update. Download, download, update, download. It's time for us to update, amen. F phones be acting quite funny would be before you upgrade amen but the, the upgrade you should see a vast difference in in the and what God wants to do so run over there check that out but but though th this morning um um I want to deal with um with those something and um and uh, I've shortened my I've shortened the Lord says shorten some of your lessons told me that, that they were too long so stick to this framework so uh, Y'all pray for me as I, I do humbly obey the Lord, amen? amen, and try to squeeze into all the, into the number of slides that, that he told me I could use. I'm going to try to impact them slides with as much information for us, amen? Amen. As a, uh, under gracious Father, we, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise, Father God. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, and may your anointing cause someone to cry out at the end I yield, I yield, I hold out no longer may you speak encouragement to the one that needs to be encouraged and may you wrap your arms around the one that needs your arms to be wrapped around them Father God, may you pull the one that needs to be pulled may you stretch the one that needs to be stretched let your word do what it, what it was designed to do so, Father God, now, right now, none of me, but all of you, I repent for anything that I've done that might hinder you using this frame for your use. Now, Father God, use me like you use me till you use me up. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. I love the eagle-eyed prophet. Amen. This guy is considered to be the eagle-eyed prophet. Amen. And so we're... When I hear eager eye cooler, I hear, I hear somebody that could be way up somewhere and still see something in water. 
You ever, you ever seen, I know uh, under some of us have, have been cruising, have been cruising down the lane of, um, of uh, Facebook and YouTube and, and seen some um, videos of, of, um, of eagles flying down. And you'd be wondering what they're flying down to get in there, soup down in the water, and they'd come out the water, flapping their head. They got their, they got their fish in their hand. They'd flying off to eat that fish. Okay, so, um, so, so, so this morning I want to start off by using the eager eye prophet. Amen. Isaiah 55, 1 through 3. Amen. I got my beautiful wife with me. Amen. To look at her. Don't she look good? Amen. Look at her looking all cute. Amen. And so uh, I to thank God just for everything he's doing. Hey, it's my dad and my mom's um, anniversary today. 55 years. Today, July the 17th. Amen. 55 years ago, God brought two people together for, for the good of me. Amen. And six other brothers and sisters. Amen. And so to God be the glory for the ones that actually trained me to be diligently followers, followers of Christ Jesus. Amen. And so, Pastor, we love you. We thank you. Amen. Run back and give mom a hug for us and tell her happy, happy anniversary. Amen. Today, 55 years. And so this is amazing. I'm coming out of uh, Isaiah 55. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 55, 1 through 3. three. And so, uh, um, I, I, huh? <laughs> Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trina finally got it, y'all, okay? She's a little slow, but, but the, don't say nothing about it. I, I get you, amen. Let me just call her slow, amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop, Joe. That's enough, okay? All right. So, um, it reads like this, y'all. And please understand the way God showed me things. Amen. It said, hey there, all who are thirsty, all who are thirsty, does it suggest that everybody's not thirsty? Let's keep going. All who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Mm, thank you, Jesus. In other words, do you not have no money? Amen. Or do you not have enough money? Amen. Come anyway. Wow, I can come anyway. Buy and eat. Somebody say, buy and eat. Buy and eat. Come. Buy your drinks. Uh oh, 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 say, folks. Uh oh, uh oh, say, folks. Buy your drinks. Buy. Amen. That's for the ones that are doing a Gatorade. Amen. Buy your wine. Ooh, every now and again, uh, over nice steak dinner, amen. This eager eye prophet, I ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Y'all can fuss about that later, amen. And milk. Buy without money. Buy without money. Where can you go and buy without? I want to go to the Jordan store and they tell me, come and buy without money. Yes. Lord have mercy. Everything's not a dollar. Everything not five dollars in under lip. Everything is free. Am I say free? free? Why do you save your money on junk food? Speak to me, Jesus. Your hard-earned cash on cotton candy. Mm -mm -mm. Come on now, come on now. Straight, straighten this out, I say. Straighten this out, I say. Straighten it out because every now and again, I'm going to give you a little bag of cotton candy out there. Come on now. He said, listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen well. Eat only the best. Oh, Lord have mercy. Feel yourself. So eat only the best. Okay, that's kind of broad. Then he narrowed it down some. Feel yourself with only the finest. Woo, Lord have mercy. Mm. Three says this. That's already, I could preach right there and just go on and, and sit down. It say, pay attention. Come close now. So, does that suggest that you can't really pay attention far away? I probably get quiet because it so got quiet on the inside of me too. I just wanted it to, I just wanted it to sound like it, it did when he was telling me this. He said, listen carefully. To my life giving, life nourishing words. Listen carefully. He say, I'm making a lasting covenant 
commitment with you. The same that I made with David. It's sure, solid, enduring love. Sure, solid, enduring love. Let's skip down in the same, same the chapter to verse 6. 6 says, y'all please, y'all follow me. This is going to be beautiful. This is out of the message translation. It says, seek God while he, while he is here to be found. How does, does this suggest that it comes a time where I may not be able to find him? Let's keep going. Pray to him while he's close at hand. Mm -hmm. Does this suggest that there might come a time where he's not as close as I want him? Number seven says, let's just keep cruising down this. Amen. Y'all going to love it. Let the wicked abandon their ways, their way of life, and the evil, their way of thinking. Let them come back to God, who is merciful. Come back to our God, who is lavished with forgiveness. Eight says this. I don't think the way you think. The way you work is not the way I work. God decrees. I just need to say that one more time. This just sounds good to me. I don't think the way you think. The way you work is not the way I work. God decree. Nine says this. For as the sky soars high above earth, so my way so the way I work surpasses the way you work. The way I think is beyond the way you think. Mm -hmm. So um, under this new topic, under construction, we're going to be under construction for a little time. Getting in proper alignment. Today I want to talk about proper perspective proper perspective we need to have proper perspective amen now i got i got some, some stuff here amen um um i got a i got my older sister sometimes she she's a she's a um a, a illustrator and every now and again god tell me to bring this and bring this so proper perspective it's time we have proper perspective. So, uh, so, so, so I got this, um, these goggles. No, no, these are called um, binoculars. Binoculars, amen. And so, God wants us to have proper perspective. So, y'all, I got about, I got about, I got about eighteen minutes, amen. So let's cruise th through this, um, because um, I got to get all this in us within eighteen, twenty minutes, amen. God to be willing, I'll take 30, but I'm going to try to do it in 18. Amen. Y'all ready? Yes. Somebody say use him. Somebody say use him. Use him, Jesus. Today we want to unpack another package in our new series, and it's called Proper Perspective. Proper Perspective. So what is perspective? What does it mean? What does it mean? It's a way of looking at something, thinking about something. It's a way I'm going to look at something. It's a way I think about something. Second thing is, all that I can see from a certain viewpoint. Wow, that's important. So a perspective is all I can see from a certain viewpoint. In other words, if I bring Haley up here and tell her to, her to look as far as she can look, she can only see but so far, and it's understandable because she's only going to see from her viewpoint. And I see, I'll probably see, and my peripheral vision is a little bit wider than hers now. And so I start describing things to the, to the right of me. She ain't developed that gift yet. Amen. 
Here are some other words for it. It's angle, viewpoint, interpretation, belief, conviction, judgment, mindset, a notion, an opinion, a, per, uh, a percep um, perception, persuasion, and view. Mm -hmm. Y'all check this out. It is, it is extremely important how we view life. Let's... Let's also establish this. Let's establish this. We don't all have the same perspective in life. Let's agree on this. We don't all have the same perspective in life as others do. Y'all check this out. Some now, uh, none of us are clones of each other. Y'all listen to me. I'm talking to parents. None of us are clones of each other. We are all uniquely created. Designs original created with individual purpose. Now y'all this should be comforting. In other words the, that I don't have Jojo is not a clone of his daddy even though daddy gave him his my same name. He's not a clone of me. Jojo was uniquely created by God with a design originally created for him. Original design, he has an individual purpose, which, which is confident. Because of our differences, y'all please, please follow me. I'm going somewhere. I'm going to get excited in just, just a few minutes, but until then, let's, let's just keep to the course. Amen. Because of our differences, because of our values, one may say, there's nothing wrong if I do this or that. While another say, I've been convicted not to. Now, y'all, let's not beat the one that's not convicted not to. Because they only can see from the viewpoint that they can see from. Amen? Which is why it's always good to teach. Because teaching changes viewpoint. Education changes viewpoint. Amen. So then, the, um, this makes it dangerous. Y'all, please listen to me. This makes it dangerous to be out of alignment with an improper perspective while living life. You can't be out of alignment with an improper perspective while we live life. There's a question. That the drops on me and it says this. What does an improper perspective look like? What does an improper perspective look like? Amen. Let's run over here to Philippians 2, 1 through 7. It's going to help us out. Amen. Uh, under, and I'm going to make sure that it helps us out. Amen. It says, if you've gotten anything out of following Christ, if. His love has made any difference in your life. If being in a community of the spirit means anything to you. If you have a heart. If you care. Now I don't know about y'all, but that's five ifs. And so now we're in the midst of grace now. Amen. Now we're in the midst of grace because because the number for grace is five, so now we're in the midst of grace. Y'all watch this. Then do me a favor. Agree with each other. That's proper perspective. Love each other. That's proper perspective. Be deep-spirited friends. That's proper perspective. Three starts talking about improper perspective. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. So improper is me. I don't push myself to the side and I only advance me, myself, and I. Amen. Let's keep going. Don't be obese with getting your own way 
in proper perspective is to want your own way. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Some of y'all might turn me off in a few minutes, but, uh, but, uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep talking. Amen. Five says this. Think of yourself the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. Amen. Six says this. I love scripture, y'all, because, because scripture, Jesus is the answer. Amen. So I'm going to find my answer in Jesus. He says this. He had equal status with God. Y'all listen to this. But he didn't think so much of himself that, that though he had to cling to the advantage of that status no matter what. Seven says this. Not at all. When the time came, somebody said when the time came. He set aside the privilege of, of the deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Oh, Lord. I'm glad Trina here today, y'all. I'm going to help out with, with that slave thing. Amen. I'm glad she here today because Jesus took on the status of a servant. In other words, a servant is someone who does what the master says. And for me to refuse to be a servant is to, re is to refuse God as my master. Mm. Come on, y'all. Walk with me. We're going to still go somewhere. This is why I feel we have a lot of unsatisfied Christians. Y'all follow me. I'm going somewhere. They, <coughs> they, don't, they don't have the proper perspective like Christ. We want what we should not have. Lord, speak to me. Mm -mm -mm. Want what we should not have. We burn with improper passion. Man, I don't care whether that's to the opposite sex or whether that's to, the, to your credit card. We burn with improper passion. I don't care whether that's uh, Rocky Roller, ice cream, or a big bag of Doritos. <laughs> we burn with improper passion. Passion. I don't care whether that's a little, what, what they call it now. We, we call it reefer back in the day. We call it reefer. What they call it, weed now. You know, weed, skunk, amen. I don't care whether you, you're burning with improper passion to where you need this to help you out. I don't care whether it's sex. We burn with improper passion because we refuse to do it Jesus' way. I told you last week, he said, I am the way. Truth. Life. We become reckless. We, be, we become restless. Restless too quick. And allow that to gauge how we live life. Have you ever did, have you ever made some impact? Uh, uh, um, some, some purchases just on the stake of saying I'm tired of waiting. Ah, uh, let the thing go on sale again here. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. None of y'all ever did that. Okay, 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 okay. That's just me. Okay, so so y'all point your hand to PJ and say, PJ, PJ. God, God, be with you. Be with you. Amen. In other words, you're telling grace. Be with me, man. Because sometimes we gauge by our impatient, by us being impatient, we gauge it on how we do other things. You know, some of y'all just won't wake up early in the morning to go to work. And so most of y'all have to drive quickly to work. And you gauge because, because you are undisciplined in getting up in the morning. Now you speed and you say, God understands. Understand what? Yes, you do understand. You are undisciplined. Which leads me to this next one. We just too undisciplined. We're all over the place. We're all over the place. Some day we want to smoke. Next day we want to pray. Some of us smoking while we praying. Getting high while we praying. We all over the place. 
Some of you, some of you, some of you praying while you're on Facebook. All over the place. Some of you going getting that free wine. I ain't gonna let them forget it. I ain't gonna let them, I ain't gonna let the saints forget that God said we can come by buy some free wine. Amen. <laughs> Woo! You know, you know what? You know what? Your old school. I heard old school. Get what old school said. Not too much. That ain't what he said though. Amen. Nor, nor was one of our our beloved patrons. God chose Noah to start a new generation. Noah got so happy after he got out that ark, Trina. Got the drink, he got naked. <laughs> Amen. Now, I don't know whether it was too much. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you your illustration. But sometimes we burn with improper passion and we're too impatient. We, we move too quickly when God's saying slow down and we slow down when God's saying move. Anybody hear me? I'm going to say that again. We, we move too quickly when God say, Joe, halt. Halt. Who goes there? <laughs> yes, you see, you see that, that's just the inside Miller joke. And all them got all them start laughing. Halt. Who goes there? Amen. So, so, but the, y'all watch this. And then we, we slow down when he tells us it's time. Let me give you a commercial. If you're living life comfortably, you, you're not living life in Christ. If everything you're doing feels good, you're not in Christ. How do you say that? My ways are not your ways. When God starts telling me to do things, it's like, huh? How much? When? How, how you say it again, Lord? How much time do I have to, to give you my answer? I got to run, y'all. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I know we live in this dog-eat-dog-eat world where, where we are only concerned about ourselves. However, is that really proper perspective when the Lord is encouraging us to love one another. That's right. Love one. That's right. Love one uh, an, another. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what, what, what you did to, to somebody else. Wow. Amen. I just think we should all look at that one scripture when, uh, when the Jesus said, uh, 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 ye, that will, ye that are without sin, start casting. Now, I'm telling you now, now that we're all in that room of improvement, but that sometimes we, we still get up to the, we still, y'all listen to me, sometimes we still get up to the, in the room of improvement because, because, because I'm not in there f- for what you're in there for. What does it matter what we're in there for if we're all in the same room? You got some uppity people that, that, that just sit here saying, I ain't in there. I ain't in there for smoking. You in there for lying? <laughs> ain't in there for pride. You in there for gluttony? Woo! <laughs> Somebody trying to help me preach this thing. <laughs> now, y'all, Trina said, that You in there? The moment we become too full of ourselves, the moment we become too full of ourselves, the moment we, the moment we become too full of ourselves, we lose proper perspective. Help me, Jesus. The moment Joe becomes too full of himself, I lose proper perspective. Start living life headed in a different direction than Christ. Losing improper perspective. Scripture says this, y'all. I love this. It says Hebrew 10, 35, 36 out of the King James Version. Yes, yes, y'all. I, I do still read the King James Version. Amen. 35 says this. Cast not away 
cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Somebody say cast. cast. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense, recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after, that after, that after, that after, that after, not, not before, but after you have done the will of God. After you have completed the will of God. After I followed him to the last bit. You may receive the promise. The promise. The promise. I just wanted to give us an illustration. In order for, for me to cast, I have to give away my confidence. And so... I went fishing one time. I did go fishing one time, y'all. I've been fishing one time. I caught me some fish when I went to fishing. Amen. And then though I went fishing again and that and I didn't catch nothing. <laughs> Anybody hear what I'm saying? First time I, w I went fish fishing, I cast my uh oh. I cast my net. I cast it, caught me some fish, wheeled it in. Second time I did, I didn't catch nothing the first time I cast it. To catch, catch nothing the second time I cast it. So guess what I did? I gave it up. What did the scripture say? You have need of what? Patience. Keep casting. But y'all, this casting is important. We are throwing away our confidence. Ain't nobody taking your confidence. You're casting it away. He said, cast not away. Your, don't you give away your confidence. Don't you let nobody come take your confidence and you give it to them. Trying to belittle you. I've been getting a, a series of, of texts and, and, and phone calls. Somebody, somebody telling me I don't love them. Trying to take my confidence from them. Guess what? Guess what I told them? I will not. Y'all please hear PJ. I will not defend the Christ inside of me. I'm not casting away my confidence. I will not defend the Christ inside of me. And especially when I know about you. That's hard to do. That's hard to do is keep your mouth shut when you know stuff about somebody. I know what you do. And for me not to bring up what you do while you're bringing up some false things about me is confidence. Cast away your confidence. It's got reward. Don't spend time arguing about something you can't change. Don't spend time arguing about a God issue. What do you mean, Pastor? They see God in you. And they rejecting it. Don't take it personal. Now, um, that's okay when it's outsiders, but it's different when it's your children, when it's your, your brothers and sisters, when it's your auntie, when it's your uncle. But God said, don't cast away your confidence. Christ said they hated me, so they're going to hate me and you. Don't take it personal. Settle down. It ain't about you. The Lord said, write this down too. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. Don't be, don't be so quick to retaliate. I keep telling, I keep telling that phone caller, I will not do these word games with you. I don't, I don't, I don't have to, to defend what I don't have to offend what offends you about me. Hmm. But what I did tell him was um if you can, if you can in good conscience tell me love is not here, then God bless you with good conscience. But 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 what I won't do 
It's the sin. How God tells me how to love you. People try to intimidate us all the time. Try to play word games to, um, to break down your wall of defense. You better stay firm in the liberty to what's... Be not a taker again with the yoke of bondage. Now, what I'm not saying, I don't care how you feel. What I am saying, I can't do nothing about the way you feel about me right now because I'm not changing. It is Christ that worketh in me. Proper perspective. Wives don't have to defend themselves against their husbands. Husbands don't have to have to, to defend themselves against their wife. At times, iron sharpens iron. So Christ said that you can't change how they feel about you unless you change who you represent. Now, I can make sure everybody loves me if I leave Christ. But why would I leave Christ when Christ has made me safe? For by grace has he saved me, not of myself. I got to run, y'all. I got to run. I got to run. I got to run. I would have I would have read the um, Amplified Version, but, but, but I think that's enough. Amen. I got to run. I'm about out of time. Y'all watch this. Um, now I really got to go fast now. Having confidence in God's plan for us will give us proper perspective. We must never become impatient to the point we lose our proper perspective and passion for living life in love. May we never get too arrogant and lose sight of the one we are thirsty for. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It takes true determination and it takes a true disciple to deny oneself, take up your cross, and follow Christ. Which raises a couple of questions for me. Why isn't everyone thirsty enough to come with no money and eat free? Improper perspective can cause us to be selfish, which can be dangerous. Improper perspective can cause us to be selfish and that can be dangerous. However, because we have the right to choose, y'all please listen, we can live life dangerous or live life in love and grace in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 55, 6 says this, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while, no, call on him for, for the salvation while he is near. Let the wicked leave behind his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to God and he will have compassion, mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Somebody need to receive that. 
my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, declares the Lord. These are the questions that I keep thinking about. So let me run through them before I let you go. Does this suggest that there will come a time when we will not be able to find the Lord? Does this also suggest that the salvation may not be always, may not always be this close and available for us? Now that's frightening. That's a frightening moment in life. Just to know we have wasted all these opportunities to seek the Lord, and now it's too late. It's time for us to get the proper perspective in life so we can live and not die. The choice is ours. I can hear Mama sing, singing this song to us, Limp, because I will trust in the Lord. Till I die. Gonna stay on this battlefield. Fighting for the Lord. Till I die. Okay, I'm running. John 3, 16 through 18 says this. This is the TPT version. I like how it reads. Hey Amen. Everybody know the um, original or, or the, of the uh, King James Version. But check out the way. Uh, they broke it down in this four. Here is the way God loves the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish but experience everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to judge and, and to condemn the world but to be its savior and rescue. John 14, write down John 14 and 6. So the first one was John 3, 16, 1 through 18. Now jot down John, John 14, verse 6 says this. Jesus explained, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes makes t -t -t to the Father except through union with me. To know me is to know my Father too. Write down Romans 5 Six through eight. I'm just about done to y'all. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more meat for us to carry home and chew on. Amen. Uh, for when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to, to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak, powerless to save themselves. Just for the sake of time, let's drop down to the eighth verse. But God proved, but Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place. By dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. Now, this is a good step in the right direction for a proper perspective. It's time we experience the grace of God. It's time we experience life from a different view. Every so often, Limp, I, um, before I, um, 
really started to receive that I was 50 and my eyesight was changing. I went out and got reading glasses. Went out and got some reading glasses. Now these suffice me for a little while, Corey, because reading glasses will change the perspective. But then I started finding myself, Sister Erica, making my font still bigger because the reading glasses did not work. So Trina, I went and purchased these glasses, went to the doctor, got me some more glasses. And so when I put these on, there's a thing called um, progressive lens. And progressive lens mean half of it is for reading and the other half is for distance. I didn't feel like paying what it costs for the distant view. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I didn't feel like taking up my cross and paying what it costs to get the right perspective. So then I bought these. Now when I look straight ahead, it's, it's cloudy, it's, it's out of focus because it's only because what's at the bottom is not all over the lens. And I don't need the same vision for far vision as I do for short vision. Anybody hearing what I just said? And so then Trina, finally, I had to take up my cross and get me some glasses that I could wear all the time. Now, if I run into reading a newspaper, I'm, I'm fine Cause, because I can look down here and read it. If I need a little clarity in long vision, I'm fine. That says under construction. Now, without this, I'm helpless. I'm on my own. Now, you can live life on your own. I choose to live life in Christ. That clears up my vision. So to may God bless and keep you is my prayer while we live life in love. Proper perspective. May God bless you. Thank you. What a wonderful word we heard this morning. I know you were blessed by it. I know I was. But beyond after you get that word, there's always another step to re receiving the word that we received on today. If you've never accepted Christ as Lord in your life, this is a grand opportunity for you to do so. It's very easy and simple. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. That is Romans 10, 9, and 10. So at this time, if anybody that's listening in wants to, want to accept Christ as Lord, it only takes those steps. You confess him with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you saved. And if you've done that or if you desire to do that, we can do that right now. I want to pray with you a prayer of salvation and that will seal your conviction and your con confession. And from there, allow God to lead and guide you to the next place in life. Father God, we come before you. We thank you, God, for any of those that have decided to make you as Lord of their lives. And God, all you said from Romans 10, 9 and 10, that we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we can be saved. That's all it takes. So we ask you right now, Father God, for, all, for any of those, for anybody that has made that confession, for you to walk with them and guide them in their new life experience with you. And we will forever give you glory, honor, and praise. Now have a blessed week, and now I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. We pray that this message has been an extreme blessing to your life. Please also consider joining us every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. for our Morning Glory Corporate Prayer on Free Conference Call. You can also join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our refuel service, which is held on Zoom. Every first Thursday, we will have intercessory prayer at 7 p.m. on Free Conference Call. So make sure you join us then as well. Here are three ways to give. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on Facebook as well as YouTube. Well, Team Trinity, remember, we love you.
you. Have a great week. <laughs>